It is me. It is Shannon. Sheepless Needles, vegan podcast, not about being vegan, where we do all sorts of fun stuff. We talk about knitting, we talk about gaming, we do all sorts of things. But on this particular podcast series, we're talking about Stephen West 2023 Geo Gradient Knit Along. I'm a mess, you guys. <laughs> okay, so it is Monday, October 30th. Happy Hallow- Halloween. Kind of. Let's first of all, whoa. Let's let's get it going. Now, I'm not gonna say it's nighttime, but it's nighttime. So, oh, look at all that fun. Okay, so this is New Holland Brewing Company Ichabod Pumpkin Ale. It's only 4.5, so everybody friggin' ass calm down. Um, because that's like Zip zero nothing. Okay, so clue three, you guys. All right, so this is the third episode of the... I am a disaster, you guys. The 2023 Geo Gradient Mystery Knit Along with West Knits. Um, I have just finished clue three, and by just, I mean 10 minutes ago. Finished it. It is behind me. And there's a couple things I want to talk about, but the first thing I want to talk about is... Well, A, okay, wait, let's have Mr. Editor, should I start this over? No, you you guys roll with it, okay, just roll with it. Um, Mr. Editor, put in the footage from earlier this week. I think there's only a little bit, guys, so sit tight. I'll see you in a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through this phone. Okay. Hey, guys, it's Tuesday, October 24th. I'm on my lunch, and I wanted to check in where I'm at. Clue 3 was released this past Thursday. I did not start knitting Clue 3 until Sunday, Um, so that's kind of where I am timeline-wise, and I wanted to just kind of hop on and talk about a couple things really quickly. In my last episode, I was talking about my one kind of question, concern, that wasn't really like a deal breaker or anything, but that in Clue 2, we started with color A. And I immediately was like, but wait, we ended clue one with color B. So we're going A, B, A. And I, you know, in my head, I was like, okay, but he's, there's method to his madness, right? And he even said, he's like, you know, you'll end clue two on color D. So I was like, okay, it's probably super important that we end on color D. So I'll just go ahead and start my clue two with color A, even though in my head, I was like, it should be C, So sure enough, he opens up the Clue 3 video with like, yeah, you know, most of you will probably be starting Clue 3 with C as your first color. And I understood that, but I didn't. (laughs) But again, like, I don't know that it makes that big of a difference in the way that it looks because I'm happy with it. So at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. So... Oh, I'm blown out. But you, we we went over this before. You know what what I'm talking about. So anyway... He answered that, and then finally when I started knitting on it, I called my sister, and I will have Mr. Editor put up a photo of my sister's progress because this is where it's going to get funny. All right, so I start knitting my Clue 3. She is on flying out of town, and she is like, okay, I want to send you a picture. I was like, well, don't send it to me yet because I don't want the Clue ruined, because I literally am just knitting off the page at this point and I don't know what it's supposed to look like or what the end product's gonna look like. She's like, oh, okay. She's like, I was like, give me two hours. I said, in two hours, you can send me a photo. And she's like, well, I'll send it to you. And I forget what it's called, but it's like where the picture is hidden and you click on it and then you can see it. So that if you don't want the spoiler, you won't get the spoiler. Um, so she sends it to me and I had just finished, I think two co- like colors A and B. So let me show you where I'm at. Okay, this is my clue three, right? So I had just finished my color A and my color B and her photo comes across. And I pull it up and I look at it and I'll have Steve, Mr. Editor, put side by side up. I completely thought I was knitting it wrong and it was an optical illusion because her colors really are a gradient and really blend well into one another. And so when I looked at it, I was like, how, I don't understand how this is working. 
And then I took a second, I was like, oh my God, I'm a moron. She's knit all four colors. In my head, she had only knit two. It really messed me up. So anyway, this is where, ah, my needle stopped. This is where I am on clue three. There is not a chance in hell I will be anywhere near finishing clue three by the end of this week. So I'm going to go ahead and predict that my episode three for clue three probably won't be up until the next Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I just, I just don't know how physically I would be able to get all this knitting done and keep my sanity because I think I talked about it before, but my work is out of control. So that is my check-in. I will report back. Happy knitting. Hang in there. You got, you got this. Hey gang, it's me, it's Shannon. Um, it is Saturday, October 28th, I think. Yeah, it's the 28th. So I don't know if I'm going to see you before Halloween. So if I don't, happy Halloween. I hope you get the tricks and the treats that you wanted. Um, I wanted to touch base on my knitting and talk about a couple things that have come up. Um, so first of all, let's get this out of the way. Woof. Okay, you guys. This might be, this might usurp my number one seat for fall beers. This is so good. It's called The Fear um, Flying Dog Brewery. And it's a spiced pumpkin ale. And you guys, they nail it. Like it's not, I love a good pumpkin beer, but the issue that I have with a lot of them is they're super sweet. And I am not down for that. This is not sweet. This is spicy. And I need a new bottle opener. But I love it. And I love it. So let's go. Let's pour, us, let's pour some beer. Oh, heavy foam. That's okay. We'll let it sit for a sec. Okay, so... Clue, clue three. Let, let's get into it. Um, you guys, last week I was telling you clue two, like you can do it. It's eat like if you feel like you're in a time crunch, it's doable. I am not going to say that about clue three. <laughs> you guys, clue three. I hate saying this. I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day. I feel like I finished one half and now I've got to wake up and do it all over again. You guys. <laughs> Let me show you what I have and we'll we'll talk about it. Okay, so obviously you you've seen her before. I don't know what that was. We're gonna and sorry if I'm not looking at you and I'm looking at the monitor because I'm trying to figure out how I'm showing you this. Okay, so this is one part. Oh, spoilers, sorry, clue three. Um, this is the first section of clue three here. Here you go, right? First of all, you guys, I love my colors. I love them. All right, now, I don't know how close, we're gonna talk about a couple things here. From a distance, from a distance, isn't that like Bette Midler or something? I don't know. Anyway, from a distance, you guys, I feel like this is a polyester shirt pattern from the 70s that like one of the dudes from Chips would have worn like in their off-duty hours when they were like gonna go to a bar and hang out or a disco. I feel like, uh, was it Ponch or John? One of them, I think it was John who always wore a cat. I don't know, either one, doesn't matter. They probably, either one would have worn it. I feel like this is a pattern that would have been on their shirt. I don't, I'm not hating on that. I'm just saying, do, 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 chips. <laughs> that's, that's where this is going, chips. So anyway, you know, it was, my sister was like, oh my gosh, I love this, it's so much fun, you know, when she first started it. And I started, I was like, okay, I can see why it's got a cadence to it. There is a rhythm to this knitting, I, I for sure. And people, you're either gonna jive with that or you're not. And flat out, I, I think I do, but I'm like, after I finished this, I was like, I don't wanna do it again. And now I have to, cause you have to do the other side. Cause it's like a mirror image. Um, what I don't like about it, you guys, and I know it's part of the patterning, it's, it's the, 
it's these white stitches that pop through on the next color. Now, it doesn't bother me in the darker blended colors. It's the light color. So if you were somebody whose four colors, like one was drastically lighter than the rest, you're gonna have this issue. If you're like my sister, and I'll, set, I'll have Mr. Editor put a photo of hers up, her colors blend really well. Like they grade into each other properly. It's not like a stark contrast. This section looks gorgeous on hers. Now she's not done, but what she's done so far is beautiful and I love it. And that's not to say that I don't love this, but it definitely gives me polyester shirt vibes and maybe like an afghan on the Roseanne, you know, Roseanne's couch. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. So anyway, it, you know, it's not difficult knitting. And I will say this, that I could not memorize the pattern. You might be able to, but my brain, I, I just kept looking at it. Because there's sometimes where you're, you know, slipping behind. It doesn't matter. I had to use the pattern. I could, like, the eyelets, I didn't have to. Once I knew it, I knew it and I could go. This, I've had to have the pattern with me. Which, by the way, let me tell you what happened that was really funny. I was in my office, and I had the pattern in here, and I had this in here because I was going to knit on my break. And it's in the morning, so it's before my break, and I'm actually working. And all of a sudden, I hear Maggie go, uh, you know, you know the noise. And the only thing I had near me, the only thing I had near me was the pattern. So this is what cracks me up. My original Clue 1, and I'm sure Stephen West will appreciate this. The original Clue 1 that I printed way back when got vomited all over a massive amount of cat puke on it and it went in the trash. And I just thought, how poignant of an ending for Clue, the original Clue 1, my cat threw up on it. Cheers. So anyway. I reprinted Clue 2 because I think Clue 2 was in that. I think I don't even know what I ended up reprinting, but I did need to use it with this. So um, once you get... Okay, so I'm on my... <laughs> I'm on my Chia Goose. And this is a 60-inch thing. Overkill, you guys. You do not need a 60-inch, at least not for this. So when I got here... <clears throat> excuse me when I got kind of like in this area up I switched over to my flexi flips because this got out of control and every time I would go to turn the work the needles would fly out and so I would just be holding the knitting and then I'd have to re-put the stitches on I was like okay that's annoying once I flipped to my flexi flips on the once we got more narrow super easy super easy to do um, once again it is Kitchener at the tip and I once again have to watch a video like 8,000 times to figure out how to do Kitchener because my dumb ass can't remember it. And now I know why people get the Kitchener stitch tattooed to their fucking forearm. I'm with you people. If I ever were to get a tattoo, it might be the Kitchener stitch. I don't know. It might also be 666. Who the fuck knows? So anyway, I got through that section, right? And the this section was off my live stitches on the needle from set the the clue before from clue two but half of clue two stitches you guys were on waste yarn over here just ignore act like this section hasn't been started so there was waste yarn with my stitches on it and you guys pro tip that you probably already know that i apparently forgot if you're going to put your knitting on waste yarn Use a heavier weight fucking yarn than what you're knitting with. I used fingering weight. Why was that problematic? When I put go, went to go blah 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 da chich fa. When I went to go put the stitches on the friggin' needles, it was such a pain in the ass. It was so tight. It probably took, and I'm not kidding, it probably took me 35 minutes to get the stitches on the needles. Should not take you that long. And if you use a heavier weight yarn, you can pop those little babies right up on the needle, no problem. 
you live, you learn. So anyway, once I got through putting the fucking knit stitches back on the needles, I was like, okay, I feel like Bill Murray. I feel like I'm waking up continually and now it's rinse and repeat. So now I'm on, <laughs> now I'm on the other section, right? Now, mind you, you guys, it's Saturday. Clue four dropped on this past Thursday. This is where I am at. So I am quickly, quickly not going to get this done even in four weeks. I don't care if I'm not done on the timeline in terms of the knit along because obviously I was giving myself an extra week because of the debacle with Clue 1. But even giving myself that, I'm I, there's no way. And I have not watched anything on Clue 4. I know nothing about it. I don't want to know anything about it. So I'm staying the hell off of Instagram. And I will tell you something. I think there's some really shitty folk out there who think it's really funny to post spoilers. And you know what? If that is how you derive joy in your life, good God, you need to get outside. Okay, so that's where I'm at. I have no idea when I'm gonna get done. So, me and my chips gang are gonna knit some more, but I don't know how much I'm gonna get done today because I put contacts in. And you guys, I can't really see close up, and so I'm gonna have to put glasses back on, and then I get a headache if I have glasses and contacts in at the same time. And I know all of you are like, we'll take your fucking contacts out. You guys, it's, too, it's a lot. And not to mention when I put my left contact in, it fell out and it took us forever to find it. And when I found it, I think I put it in backwards. And so then I flipped it back and put it back in. It still feels weird. And I can kind of see okay. I think it's in right, but I don't know. Do you have that problem? Do your contacts ever go inside out and you can't tell the difference? And the thing about it is, Steve's like, well, just look at it. You should be able to see, like, is it like this or is it like this? If it's like this, it's right. If it's like this... I can't see without my contacts in, so I can't see to tell you if it's like this or this. Frustrating. Am I feeling really aggressive right now? I feel very aggressive for no apparent reason. Happy October. So yeah, so anyway, back to the topic at hand. We are gonna play, I'm so friggin' stoked for this, we're doing a one-shot Arkham Horror card game and we're doing the blob that ate everything. It was, it's like a Halloween standalone scenario. Um, I will report back. I'm, you know, I love all things horror. And, you know, who doesn't like a good blob? It's like a gelatinous cube. Same thing. Um, I remember when I was a teenager, the remaking of the blob came out. And why do I feel like it had one of the Dylan brothers in it? Like Kevin Dylan. It wasn't Matt Dylan. I'm probably totally wrong on that. But somebody that looked like a Dylan brother, maybe, I don't know, was in it. And I went to the movie theater. I saw it in the movie theater. I think I saw it with Anna. Anna, I know you're not watching this, but if you are, isn't it, did we see that movie together? I can't remember. I have no... Anyway, I just remember going to the movie theater and seeing that. So I'm very excited to play that with uh, Mr. Editor this evening. But, you know, other than that, I'm not really feeling like doing much this weekend because work is kicking my butt. So let me know where you're at on your knitting. Obviously, this is footage that's going to be put in the middle of my chunked Clue 3 video. Um, but I just, I'll be real with you guys. I have not been motivated to film while I'm knitting and I used to do that. And I think part of it is like, A, I, the setup and B, it's like, if I get in a mode where I want to knit, I'm not in a mode where I want to set up cameras, right? So I can't get those two things to marry and be one and they may never be and that's okay. Um, and the other thing, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like my YouTube feed has gotten flooded and it's because of what I watch, but flooded with a ton of new knitting podcasts. And I'm feeling like a little overwhelmed by the number of them. Um, and not that I'm overwhelmed, like I can't explain the way it makes me feel, but it it's like overkill almost and I need to back away. Um, not to mention like, and I've talked about this before, and this is no slight on it, 
any knitter out there who's knitting or any knitter who has a podcast. So please understand that's not how this is intended. But there is this weird formula and I just, it drives me, I don't know why it bothers me. It is not rational. So keep in mind, again, I know this is irrational, but it starts off with like folky music, like bluegrass music or like folk music or like Mumford and Sons type of music. And it's like, grass and flowers and like script and like a lake a serene lake with fog on it and then it's like you know folky music and then you get to the like creator and they're like sitting in front of their wall of yarn and then I just I'm so bored of it like and again this is me it's a formula that works because those podcasts have hundreds of thousands of followers and millions of views so believe me I understand that I am an island unto myself in terms of this and I don't know why I dislike it as much as I do but I just do and there's so many of them and they're hitting my feed like I don't know what in the algorithm thinks I want to watch a folk music knitting podcast when like I have blue lips which by the way do you notice anything watch this There's no way this this lipstick does not cause cancer. How is it not on my glass? Anyway, I just don't like those. I just, there's something about those podcasts. And I, I, I know that the knitters are incredibly talented. And I know they are a wealth of knowledge. And I know that they're serving a great purpose in helping people. But there's just something about that formula that is driving me bonkers. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So in my little world, I'm just like, I can't hang with that. And I don't, I don't want to hang with that. But I don't know that I, I don't know that I have a formula. I just kind of, bleh, and that's what you get. Like sometimes you'll get literature for your literature. That's a little formulaic. You know, and sometimes I'll show you shit I buy and that's a little formulaic. But everything else is kind of from the hip, you guys. Like I just kind of, this is my Saturday. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> like. I don't know. How do you feel about those formulae? Let me know in the comments. And if like, I don't know. Where where do you, do you care? Do you even notice it? Do you watch it? How many podcasts do you watch? Like, who are your favorites? Put them in the notes. Let's go. All right, I'm done. I'll see you in the wrap up. (laughs) What a fucking train wreck. Toodles. Though I'm still here. (laughs) Okay. Sorry for the clap. Okay. You guys. <laughs> so I had talked to my sister over the weekend and she hadn't been able to knit very much on her clue three because she was finishing up the weekender sweater and she wanted to get that done so she could wear it because you guys sweater weather, um, sweater weather. So, So what she did mention to me, she said, Shannon, did you watch the video for Clue 3? I was like, I watched like the first, I got to the very first section, ah, hair in the lip, hair in the lip, about Kitchener, because like I said in the footage you saw, like, it doesn't matter how many times I do Kitchener stitch. Again, I just did Kitchener stick, stick, stitch a week ago, and tonight I had already forgotten it. So once again, I had to watch a video on how to do Kitchener stitch. Anyway... When I was talking to her, she's like, did you happen to watch Clue 3? I was like, no, I didn't really. I watched the first bit to the till I got to the Kitchener stitch, and then I went about my business. Oh. Um, you might want to. I was like, why? I was, she's like, well, you know how you had picked the, in the very beginning, your version 3 of Clue 1, which was a modification that then we were told we weren't supposed to do modifications? <laughs> and so that's why I didn't do that. That's the one he highlighted at the end of the Clue 3 video. (laughs) So, did I misunderstand? Am I dreaming? And listen, let me just say something. Oh, I don't have it out here. Hold the line. You guys, I'll be right back. I told you guys I'm never prepared. Come on, what are you thinking? I'm going to be organized? Okay, so here was my, sorry, version 3 of Clue 1. And it was the beginning 
of what he showed. Now, I must have misunderstood the third video where he was like, we are walking away from clue one. I'm not supporting modifications, blah, 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 blah. We're moving forward with the square outward what I did. So I was like, okay, that's not a big deal. I didn't really, I'm not, and I wasn't mad. Like I got it, but I was like, and then when I started looking at this and then when I finished that, I actually don't like this color palette with this modification. The color palette that his wonderful friend knit with this modification, which I think is her modification. And again, I'll figure out who it is, was beautiful, beautiful with that color palette. So I'm actually happy accident that I just was like, I'm, I'm for once in my life, I'm going to do what someone tells me to do. And I did what Mr. West told me to do, which was, hey, dump your clue one, start, but boom. So that's what I did. And it was the best advice I could have taken because you guys, I far more prefer the way that my center looks now. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay, so there it is. So that's where we ended up, right? Here's my wingtip one, wingtip two. I will have Mr. Editor insert photo, chicha, so you can get a close up look. You guys, I'm loving it. I set it down, like with the footage that Mr. Editor's gonna put up, that's on my couch in my living room. And so the lighting might be a little bit weird, but I can't be bothered right now because it's nighttime and I'm trying to kick back. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, when I got above it and took the photo, I was like, graphically, I am so down with the way this looks. It's phenomenal. It's really interesting to me when I look at it by section, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of like, eh, I'm not into these wingtips, right? But when I look at it as a cohesive piece, I friggin' love it. And that is the genius of Mr. West because I feel like he... I just, I, I love it. That's all. We all know I love him. Come on. So anyway, super stoked, super happy to be done. Have not even printed Clue 4. Have not watched any footage about Clue 4. I don't know when I'm going to start Clue 4 because tonight, I literally, I'm not knitting. I just want to, no knitting. And then tomorrow's trick or treat and I have training out of town Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I, I may not get back to knitting until the weekend and that's okay. Solid beer. Um, like if you need a low ABV fall beer, this is great. But by the time you watch this, I'm sure it's probably not going to be in stores anymore because what's up with pumpkin beers and fall beers coming out late July and August, early August this year, dude, when it is a hundred degrees outside, my ass does not want a spiced pumpkin ale, a last thing on my mind. So now when I want, hey, I, this is great weather for a spiced pumpkin ale, I go in, it's Christmas beer. Are you freaking kidding me? It's not even November. Anyway, whoo, I'm having a very aggressive moment once again. Okay, so other thing that I wanna talk about with this. <laughs> okay. Everyone else, and maybe it's just the close-up photos. Okay, so, I don't, I wish you could see. All right, you know the zigzags? Let me see if I can get this. There we go, okay. See the zigzags, right? They look super plump in the photos of other people that I've seen. And I think they're looking plump. And I listen, this could be knitter's problem. I might be totally like out of here with what I'm going to suggest. But I think this might be the fact that this isn't wool. <laughs> because vegan struggle with knitting, one of the things that can happen is, you know, wool, because it's an animal fiber, the fibers themselves, I don't want to call them spurs, but they lock together and that's why wool can be like a winterizing waterproof fabric depending on the type of wool and how it's treated when you knit with it that's why it felts right like so 
it just ha it makes a different fabric than a non animal fiber yarn does. So cotton doesn't have those barbs in the same way that an animal fiber has. So where you have that puffiness of the blowout of the fiber, you don't get that at least with 100% cotton in my experience. I think you can get it with acrylic. Like acrylic has a very similar plumpness to it, but it's really hard to find an acrylic fingering weight in the color palettes that you want in a quality that you want. So you got to pick your battles. So I would much rather knit with organic cotton than acrylic, period. But the downside to that is I'm not going to get the same plumpness or cush factor with a cotton that I will with other fibers. So it made me think, oh gosh, did I do the entire thing wrong? Well, if I did, I don't really care because I like it. But I do think like when you get into the, I hope this isn't totally blowing out for you guys because I can't really tell. But when you look at the, the light color, the lightest color, let me see if I can do this. Um, you can see, okay, you can see the actual yarn over, or not yarn overs, but yarn in fronts, right? Like the separation of the strands you can see. Other people's in wool, those strands are kind of grabbing each other. That's, that's what I'm seeing visually. I don't know if I'm out of left field. Any of you knitting along with this, let me know how your two wingtips are looking, if you've noticed that. And let me know if you're knitting like with a non-animal fiber or an animal fiber, because that could help you know, answer that question. I'm super, like I said, I'm super stoked with it. Here is the state of my yarn right now. I have not weighed it, but this is what I'm working with. So I feel pretty good. I will say I am the lightest on A and B. Um, doing pretty well on C and D. So I guess I'll have to wait and see um, what clue four is. He did say to have a scale, so I'll probably weigh it at some point when I friggin' feel like weighing it and getting my kitchen scale out. Ha, <sighs> yeah. So it's done. I'm done. I'm done with clue three. I'm going to say something that I probably will regret saying. <laughs> Shocking. I don't feel like this knit along or this shawl. I don't know how to say this because it's going to sound judgmental and I don't intend it to, but I don't think this shawl has the wow factor or the like Shazam factor that people expect from West Knits. Now, I say that because typically the knit alongs, it, it, you're like learning all sorts of new things. It's like crazy shit happening every two seconds. And like somehow in the end, it comes together as this beautiful piece, right? This is much more sedate to me. In a positive way, I do not mean it in a negative way, but it is surprising me. And then I'm thinking, oh God, what is clue four gonna be? Now, what I'm wondering is, is because this is a muted palette for me, is that why I feel that way? Because it's not like jarring colors and like craziness? I don't know. Um, but I think that given what occurred with clue one and then moving forward from that, it just seems to be a very calm pace of knitting, and I'm just not used to that. And I don't know if that's a comment on the knit along or if that's a comment on my experience growing as a knitter, right? Like, am I feeling that way because I'm just more comfortable in my knitting than I have been in the past? I don't know. I have no idea. So give me your take. What do you think about the visual on it so far? Like I said, I love it. And here's the other thing. A lot of times people will complain and say things like, well, it, they're fun to knit, but I'll never wear it. Like you get these weird ladies. I'm like, well, if you're not going to wear it, why the fuck are you knitting it? Like if you're giving it as a gift, great. But if you're not, and then you're not going to wear it, what are you doing with it? Like I don't, <laughs> I don't understand people. Um, but for me... 
This one is probably the most wearable of the ones that I have knit. And it's wearable not only because it's right now it's not like large marge, right? It, it's a pretty good size. But it's also wearable because of the palette. Like in the past, my palettes have been like, whoop bam So like if I'm going to wear it, I'm wearing it. No, let me take that back. If I'm if I put it on, it is wearing me at that point, right? Um, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> so I, you know, I, it's an interesting, this has been interesting for me because I feel like this one is just more like accessible to the mainstream, I guess, than some of his other patterns have been. Um, or maybe the mainstream is catching up with him. I don't know. Um, it kind of makes me think of this, like I saw this post on Facebook, which I'm rarely on, but Someone that I'm friends with had posted a tube of um, wet and wild black lipstick, which was like, and it was from like 1990, maybe it was like an old tube of lipstick. And it was like, yeah, this is what it was like before goth was really popular. And I was like, oh, before everyone wanted to be goth and popular. And I started laughing because I was like, oh, my God, that's true. Back in the day, like, the only way I was able to wear black lipstick was I would put lipstick on and I would mix in eyeliner and eyeshadow and make it black. And now, like, friggin' Christian Dior has a black lipstick. Like, that's crazy to me. But this knit-along, it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of like, I think that Stephen West's designs have always been alt, have always been off the, the center of knitting in a good way. Because that's the way I live my life, right? Like, I'm not... Dude, obviously, look at me. Anyway, I don't even know why I have to say that. But it just occurs to me that I don't know that he's shifted at all. I think the knitting population has shifted and accepted things that they did not accept before. And for me, one of the things about the knitting community, when I, <laughs> when I see like photos of like woolen folk or like, which by the way, don't know what that debacle was about and not going near that with a 10 foot pole or like Ryan Beck, a lot of times there's just a certain segment of knitters that I don't fit in with. Don't fit in with visually, don't fit in with them politically, don't, I mean, like I just, I don't fit. And that's okay because there is room in the knitting community for everyone. But I think what it is, I think that group is now like, oh, there's something to that, that West knits. Like, I think they're finally like accepting it as wearable, accepting it as artwork, but accepting it as knitwear. Whereas before, I think they treated it like it was kitsch. And like because it had loud colors or whatever the choice was, that somehow that made it not worthy of like, I don't know, whatever. And I always just think about people who pigeonhole art or craft in that way. It's like the people who are, I just don't, I don't, I don't. Because my brain doesn't work that way, it's hard for me to understand. So when I look at this now and I'm like, okay, I don't know that Westness has shifted at all. I, th I do think it's the mainstream, it's become more acceptable. And it's the same way like in the 90s. Okay, so in the 80s, I bought my first pair of combat boots. In fact, my first pair might have been from a thrift store, but my, the first pair I bought, bought, I bought a pair of Doc Martens. This was before I was vegan. I was a vegetarian, so they were leather back the fuck off. Anyway, I mean, and I went to Boston. I think I was, if I'm remembering this correctly, I was on a weekend in Boston from high school. And I, for, it was like Harvard Square, and I forget the store, but they were 14 eyelet oxblood Doc Martens. I wore the fuck out of those. But the point being is you could not go everywhere and find Doc Martens. Like, could have I found, I wasn't living in Ohio, like where I live now at the time. So I was living in New Hampshire, whatever. But now, like, and then in the night, okay, so then fast forward to like 90s, whenever grunge came in, whenever 90s, like all of a sudden you started seeing like these really preppy girls put on plaid and combat boots, like they had been wearing it their whole life and they were suddenly your best friend. And it was a really disconcerting moment because the people who had been making fun of me were now dressing like me. 
And it was a really like, I don't want to gatekeep how people dress or what they do. Because if that's you, you do you. But back then it was like, okay, this is a little weird that you hated me, threw shit at me and spit on me. But now you want to know where I get my clothes? Like it was a weird moment. And again, I was so young then that my reaction probably was a little gatekeep gatekeepy. But as an adult... When that happens now, when when people have been like, Ugh, and then they latch onto it, I'm like, okay, what opens your mind up? Because I'm so happy you came to the table, right? Like, I'm so, I'm so happy you're joining the conversation. Because there's a lot of things that I look at, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting choice. But it's a choice, right? And like, I'm curious about that choice. And it may not be for me to wear or knit. But I don't think it's any less worthy of critique or, or praise, right? Like, I, it's just weird to me how that works. And this tube of lipstick brought me right back to, like, I can remember the girl. Okay, nobody I went to college with is ever going to watch this. But there was this girl, Hillary, who lived in the room next across the hall from me. And I can remember the, when she came in in plaid and combat boots. And I was like, oh, This is a choice. You've made a choice. (laughs) It just was disconcerting. And so I guess that's how I feel about this. But like now when I see people wearing West Knits and wearing it proud, they're from all walks of life. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be accessible to everyone. I don't know what the fuck the point of this Clue 3 video was other than to say, Put your fucking black lipstick on. Get your combat boots. Wear whatever you want. If someone has a problem with it, it probably means that they probably want to look like you and they're too scared to do it. That's all I'm saying. Because, like, at some point, you just stop caring. Like, I don't care what people think. People look at me and they're like, what is this dumb 50-some-odd-year-old lady doing with her blue hair and her frigging glitter lip, whatever, and wearing her festive Halloween sweater? Look. I don't have time to explain myself to you because I can't even explain myself to myself. (laughs) I don't know. I'm just here trying to be happy. I'm just here trying to spread the joy of whatever this, whatever this package is. And yeah, so, well, I guess that's the name of this video. Welcome to the table, motherfuckers. (laughs) I don't know. know. Clue four, you guys, let's do it. I'm, You'll see me for the wrap-up video. That'll be the next one. And then, like, you don't ever have to watch me again if you don't want to. Or if you're like, man, that girl's a little nuts. I'm down for it. You just like and subscribe. Hang out. I try not to use profanity, but tonight was not a good example of that. So I'm sorry if you had your kids around, but I hate to break this to you. They've probably heard the F-bomb before. Just saying. All right. Happy Halloween. Give out good candy. And remember, when a 14-year-old comes to your door trick-or-treating, they could be do something far worse than out trick-or-treating with other kids. So I don't care how old you are. If you come, listen, don't be a creeper 38-year-old dude coming to my door. But I'm just saying, if you're under the age of 17 and you're, or whatever, 18, and you're trick-or-treating with your gang of friends, listen. I will give you candy. I don't care because you know what that means? You're not out doing dumb shit. Give the kids some candy. Stop being crotchety old folks, whoever you are. You Crotchety old folks aren't watching this. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Toodles.